Most definitely. And I think we've we've all been through that down that road with the high expectations as an artist, especially being an independent artist, because we I know for myself, I I try not to, but I do it subconsciously comparing my music to mainstream. And when I say that, I mean the, the words, the way that it's recorded, the, the finishing product. And we do we do set these high expectations and because we obsess about, especially if you're a perfectionist, you obsess about getting it right the first time. So absolutely, I, I totally agree with where, where you're coming from. Um, one of your songs, I listened to a few, like I said, I, I really enjoy Paranoid, but I think so far, one of the ones that's my favorite, you're, you're welcome. One of my favorite songs is a song that you wrote called Fake Friends. I've been listening to it back to back to back, like constantly. I've also added it to my uh, playlist on Spotify. I've dealt with fake friends. So I wanted to get inside your head, Ruth, and find out what were you thinking when you made this song? Like, let me know. Like, what what happened? I'm just going to be really honest. I'm okay. Very much under the influence of alcohol when I wrote oh. that song. Because I got I got in from like an evening out and I just felt like so melancholy and depressed that I just had a tune in my head so I recorded it as a voice note and that's what the song was. But it's just like I wanted paranoid to be like this sounds so pretentious, but I wanted it to be like a feeling, like I wanted it to make people think of a feeling rather than a literal situation. And you know that feeling when someone's just being fraudulent yes. with you and you just start thinking about it. And you start getting irritated and you're like, I swear, we've been through this before. And you never know when you'll be in a mug and when you're actually having a good, decent friendship. And I wanted it to be about mistrust more than anything. That's why like paranoid leads into fake friends, because when you're feeling a bit like paranoid about people, it's sometimes difficult to tell if it's your intuition or if it's anxiety or if it's like a traumatic experience where someone has stabbed you in the back before and now every friend you start looking at them all suspicious when it's not even really that deep. So it was one of those situations that was just feeling like someone doesn't really have your back. And I just felt like there was a time where I was around people and I just felt like they didn't feel my feelings the way I thought a friend should. Like it was as if there was like a distance between us, like it wouldn't matter what happens to me it's just all a punchline and a joke to them because you're just wow. entertainment it's not a real friendship and it was just that feeling and then that creates paranoia in all of your relationships for me it's really important to be able to speak to people frankly directly if we're really really friends otherwise you're just like somebody I know and I'd rather know what the relationship is so I know how to act because Sometimes you get your feelings hurt because your expectations of people are way off from what is actually going on. So, yeah. It's you painted exactly such a perfect thing. picture. <laughs> 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 like, seriously, you did. Because, um, like I said, I can relate so much to that song. And I like, when it comes to music, when I'm listening to someone, it's very important to find them relatable. And I think a lot of the times with the artists nowadays, we can't relate to them. So that's why, you know, we don't listen to their music or we might not like that artist. So you're definitely an artist that I can relate to. I hate it when I start listening to a song lately. I'm finding even the, the punchlines that people use. I'm like, I feel like attacked as I'm listening to songs. I'm like, who are you, are you talking about me? <laughs> How are you going to make a song about how rich you are and how broke I am. Like, why would I want to listen to that? <laughs> exactly. But people don't see, people don't look at it like that. Like, you're not relating to your fans. Like like you said, you're making your fans feel like, I don't have money, so if I saw you at the club, you wouldn't even look my way. It's sad, but you're right. <laughs> you're so... Everybody can't buy a Birkin bag. Some people don't even know what a Birkin bag looks like. I mean... <laughs> I mean, you're right. So that's why I appreciate artists like you and as well as myself because it's important to be relatable. And Fake Friends is forever in my playlist. I'm telling you what I know. I'm just, I have been listening to it back and forth. And I, I said, I have to ask Ruth, 
what was she thinking? Like, did someone, you know, <laughs> what what they say, be friend? Like, did someone befriend you and then do something like, oh, I, you know, I can't have this, but that's perfect. And I couldn't, as I listened to your music, I couldn't really compare you to another artist. I, I think if I if I would like to see you network with someone or do something with someone, it would probably be India Ari. What genre would you place your music in? It's really difficult because in my mind yes. I make like soul music, but when I listen to it, it never sounds like that. And is it? Would I you say it, maybe a neo soul? Yeah, I think so. I think so, but I just don't know if like, and it's also hard because you know, as music actually changes, not when it's already changed, but as it's changing, you don't even know what to call it anymore, and it gets some confusing. So. I sometimes think like alternative neo song as like a middle ground. Now that's that's probably what I would say neo soul, but like you said, music is forever evolving, so you really don't know. And what would you like to uh, say as we close the interview of the thirty minutes went by so fast? <laughs> what would you like to uh, give advice? Um, I would really like to just give advice to like all the women out there because I feel I personally feel like the more I do this, the more I realize like it isn't you. You will just be treated as if you don't know anything, and people will try and take advantage of you. So the most important thing to do is I don't don't be on guard all the time. Take opportunities as they come. Help other women for sure because they will always have your back. And even when they don't, it won't it won't be the same kind of manipulation in my experience anyway. And just don't let people get in your head because you could be right, but the world has been taught to tell you you're wrong and people will try and change everything about you. You have to be strong and know what you want. Absolutely, Ruth. You are awesome. Can you provide your social media information for the listeners? Yeah, of course. So you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Ruth Oriuni. That's Ruth O R H I U N U. That's where all my music is as well. And then on Twitter at Ruth Up In This. Great. And right now I'm doing my phone interviews because we have the coronavirus going on. So our radio station has been closed. <laughs> but when it comes back, I will yeah. have your song Paranoid and Fake Friends in our rotation. I really want you to keep pushing oh and inspiring. God. Seriously. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Thank you so I much. For you. It was lovely to talk to you. Same to you. You have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye.